Friday. The gremlins came out today. <laughs> yeah, they did. Oh, anyway. So did Chance. Yeah. Would anyone like a cat real cheap? A very mouthy, noisy cat who is dying to get up here. I'm trying to make space. Sorry, you guys. Life going a little upside down in about the last 10 minutes here. Anybody ever have that happen? Like, everything's fine. You're on, chan <laughs> You're on target. Everything's fine, and then it all... The world went upside down. Wow. There's just nothing like having a fresh cat butt right in your face. <laughs> you guys, oh my goodness. Okay, hi, cat in a very messy background. Okay, let's say hello to everybody. Um, hello, Purple Nana Linda, Angie. Um, Hey, Lena, I thought you weren't going to be home. <laughs> Cindy, Nanette, hello, hello. Hi, Kellyanne. Hi, Christine. Good to see you. Um, hi, Barbara. And Gail, and let's see. Jean, homeschool mama four. <sighs> you did, Christine. You got the day and the time exactly right. Hi, Linda. And Pam, hello. Teresa, um, Sharon, Catherine. Hello, Noe, all the way from Israel. Elvis is in the house, people. Elvis is in the house. <laughs> you don't think I want to get rid of Chan? I don't know, Christine. There are times. Hi, Annette. Hi, Linda. Oh, he's driving me crazy this morning. He's driving me nuts this morning. He just, I know this is hard to believe. He would not be quiet and just let me think. Mm -mm. I don't even know if my hair is done or my, anyway. <laughs> Hello, lovely Malia. Hi, Denise. Yeah, so welcome everybody. I'm Barb Owen from howtogetcreative.com along with one of the sponsors, Chance, that's who's down here. Charlie is back here. He's having a nap on his throne. He has a pill, he has a, he has quite a stack of soft things and a cat bed on top of it, which he's gotten lately to where he pushes the cat bed aside and lays on the, the throne of pillows and blankets. But this one, ah, oh, you, you are driving me crazy this morning. I used to do this to him when I was first got him because he was driving me nuts so I would do this to make him go away and all he does is shake his head and put his head back for more <laughs> it's like crazy you're crazy Ugh, cat spit hello Werner's grin nice to see you hi Nora some new names in the chat <laughs> you think, Christine? You think? I thought Charlie was here, but he's not. Yeah, so things went a little upside down. Anyway, um, I'm Barb Owen, howtogetcreative.com. Thank you for joining me today. This, If you are watching live, this is a live stream um, recorded in real time <laughs> with an audience do not edit the live streams unless something goes terribly awry then I might have to edit but I try really hard not to have to do that and um, so it's a live stream live people live chat that's who I'm talking to if you are watching the recording or the replay help yourselves you can just use that little scroll bar at the bottom you can set it up you know on the little wheel the settings wheel you can make me sound really funny by speeding it up to double time or whatever, or you can mute it. Are you ready to go in the other room? Hmm? Chance is, uh, 
I don't know what his problem is this morning. He loves to be on the camera with you guys. He knows it's Friday. He knows it's supposed to be drama free, drama llama free today, part two. He knows that, and so he's um, going to do everything he can to dis be disruptive. <laughs> That's what he does. He is here to make my life challenging. He is. So anyway, hi CB. Um, hi Connie and anybody that I missed. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to get into painting the llama. We're going to do a paint over technique today. And I was playing with it earlier, which is part of what got me a little bit behind. And then I got some family news that was a little unsettling and, um, you know, drama. Anyway, um, yes. And I've had a bit of a different kind of week this week, to be quite honest with you. Hi, Dorothy. It's been a bit of a different week. Yeah, so let's see. I'll tell you the, the family thing first, then we can move on from that. I am from a family of five girls. I am the baby of the family. And the oldest, I don't have contact to speak of with my family. Those of you that have read my book understand kind of the background of that. I have recently, however, within the past six weeks, begun to reestablish some connection to them. I think I've talked about that on a stream. And um, I've had contact with the oldest sister who's 16 years older than I am. I've had some contact with her through um, the last probably 10 years or so. I haven't seen her in a long time. But anyway, I got word just a little bit ago that she was en route to the hospital via ambulance and couldn't move. So she's had a couple of strokes in the last couple of years that I'm aware of. We've communicated mostly in writing. I haven't talked to her in a long time, haven't seen her in a long time. So anyway, you know, no matter what, that, you know, it's a little unsettling, of course. So anyway, her name is Gracie. Any of you that wish to remember her, that would be great. I don't know what you got into, but you've got yuck acompucky on you so anyway that I got heard that just a little while ago haven't heard anything else so my suspicion is she's not doing well yeah a lot of us have that Malia the bridge building is slow the bridge building is slow but it is progressing but it's slow um, when there's been as much um, difficulty, we'll just say that, and family relationships are always challenging, I think, for many of us, and when there is a lot of um, I don't know what word to quite use, but difficulty <laughs> we'll just say that difficulty when there is as much difficulty as there was within my nuclear family group you build bridges slowly so they're in progress they're in progress so thank you for asking Annette thank you all right I'm gonna put this thing away because he's just about to make me go crazy here I'll let you look at him so you can see you see what he does he just thinks that he's and he's laying here drooling he's laying here drooling and he is demanding attention aren't you and he's purring up a storm and he's drooling and then he shakes his head and cat spit flies everywhere it's lovely don't you wish you were here <laughs> don't you wish you were here hello Brenda yeah anyway so, anyway, you know, I, we call this Drama Free Friday on purpose. Um, 
we call it Drama Free Friday. That's what I intend for it to be. However, some days it's just not so drama free. <laughs> Today might be one of those. All right, let me put him away because he's about to he's about to stomp on my last nerve. You all probably notice, I don't know that you can see it actually, but there's a latch up here at the top. Let me see if I can show it to you just a second. See this wooden, that wooden thing right there up at the top of the door? That's a, a it's a doorstop for lack of a better word. And I always have to flip that. The reason I have to flip that is because if I don't, chance will go in, that's how I shut the door, or keep it from shutting. If I don't flip that, chance goes in there, gets behind the door, and he, I've seen him do it. That's how I know. <laughs> he stands up on his hind legs, puts his front legs on the door, he walks on his back legs, and he slams the door shut. And then he cries because He's been shut in the bed in that room back there. So that was one of the things Claus Man had to do back in the day when the cats were first here. He made one of those latches. I have another one that's on the bathroom door um, because he will do that to both doors. He will shut himself or, you know, both of them in the room. He'll shut, slam the door shut. It's been a while since he slammed the studio door shut, but he used to do that too. He'd wait until Charlie went out of the studio and then Chance would slam the door shut. It's just, he is just one of a kind. <laughs> He's one of a kind. Um, so let's see, he is a funny cat. He is a funny cat. Uh, understand Malia, understand. <laughs> Um, it's just crazy. It's just crazy sometimes. Anyway, let's see. What else? We're going to jump right into what we're going to do today, and then we'll talk, okay? We'll just talk. I don't think I have any announcements to give you um, other than how to get creative.com if you would like to have access to more videos. That's where you find them, videos and classes, anything that's not on YouTube, uh, the more in-depth classes and courses. We have two courses currently at howtogetcreative.com. It is a monthly membership uh, or a yearly membership. You can try it out for a dollar for a month. And I think that is the extent of what I want to tell you. Cheers, everybody. Hello, Saskia. I hope that's how I say your name. Huh. Hello, Sherry, right? I hope that's right. Mama is learning that Sherry, right? Mm. Hello, Tam, I think. Thanks, Sherry. I don't know why. I just had a blank in my head for some reason. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do what's called a paint over technique. And I'm going to show you where I first learned about this. Um, this is this is going back a few years, you guys. Going back a few years. Let's see if I can get my book here. I have way too much stuff on my desk and way too little room. We'll talk more about that in a minute. This is my life book book um, 
from 2014. Sorry about all the mess that you're going to see on my desk here, but this is from 2014. Lifebook is a year-long class with Tam Laporte of willowing.org. And so I did this in 2014. This was the, I've done it several years. This is the only one that I actually got completed, did all of the classes. And um, so this was my book that I created of the different lessons. Hello, skinny cat Carrie. Hi, pookie cat. We got lots of cats here today. I'm so glad. I'm glad you're here. Again, sorry about the mess. I'm trying to keep it out of the shot. <laughs> Unsuccessfully, I might add. Um, so this was one of the lessons in the life book. And this was taught by Tam Laporte. And this was a um, this was an image from a magazine. That's how it started out. And then everything was changed. So she is unrecognizable as, I think she was a model that I took a picture of a model and I used that and then of course her body style wasn't like this and her hair wasn't like this and of course she didn't have a crown so she really does not resemble the person that I originally cut out the magazine image and put it on here and then it was a process of painting over the magazine image and so we're going to do something similar except we're going to do it with the drama the drama <laughs> listen to me with the llama that we used last week in the collage so they if you're not familiar with lifebook it is a an interesting it really is an interesting class year-long class you can learn a lot of things in there um, this was for example this was all of the weeks so there were 52 weeks and so these were the subjects of the different weeks and um, she always does, I, at least she did back then, and I think she might still do it, does a warm-up at the very beginning. And then these are the different classes. And this was my word of the year that year. I don't remember what, I don't even remember what the theme was. There's always a theme <clears throat> that goes with the, goes with the year-long class. So I'll just flip through this. Those of you that took the classes will know, will rec you know, will recognize some of these images. This was from Carla Sondheim, um, and so this was, I turned it in, I can't remember if she did it as a pocket or if I turned it into a pocket and put the various things, because when you do something with Carla Sondheim, you, you generate a lot of stuff during that during any of her lessons you'll generate lots of things and I didn't want to you know I wanted to include them but I wanted them to be included you know in a loose leaf fashion so I could get them out and look at them hi Barbara and um, hello to anybody that is just coming in hi Shelly if you have any questions be sure and put them in all caps <clears throat> CB says that this was the first year she did Lifebook 2. Did you do it every year after that? There's an ad above the chat on your screen. Can't see to type and watch. Oh, well, that's annoying, Sherry. Hi, Amber. Hello, Kathy. So um, I'm just going to leaf through this. So this was another. Uh, this was another one of Tam's lessons. She does quite a few lessons throughout the year, and then if a teacher, you know, for some reason doesn't get to fulfill her lesson, Tam fills in. And um, I don't remember which this was, but anyway, this was. She does a lot of faces, a lot of girls. <clears throat> she also does a lot of animals, and. Um, and this was when she was just starting to work with inks, as I recall. And this was also a lesson by Tam. This I really enjoyed. This was a um, family tree, as I recall. Anyway, this is supposed to be me looking at my favorite big tree. This is actually how the tree looks. And this is all the people in my family. This was an abstract painting class. I really struggle with abstract stuff, really. 
struggle with it. So as I look at it now, it's like, well, yeah, I kind of look that, like that now, but boy, back when I was doing that, that was tough. Um, this is me. This was a Finnebar, Finnebar, um, Anna Dabrowska from Poland, I think. Anyway, she does lots of textural work. If you look at that, there's lots of texture on here. And hello, Tam B. Good to have you here. We have two Tams in the house today. That's excellent. Um, this is me as a little girl. This is my son as a little boy. She does lots of textural kinds of things and mostly she'll do it on, you know, like a canvas or, or whatever. So I chose to do it in here so I could put it in the book. So most everything that's in here is done with either chipboard or fabric or paper. And then I used the same techniques but did it on paper so I could put it in my book. This is the paint over collage I just showed you. Um, let's see, um, I don't remember whose this was. This was, uh, who is this? Oh, I know her name. Tracy Batista. This is Tracy Batista's class. So all of these bits and pieces were different techniques that she showed. I did them in different colorways and then just made this collage kind of thing. This was a Diane Reevely lesson. I don't remember whose lesson this was, but these are the boys. This is Charlie and this is Chance. Back in their younger days, friends are the sunshine of life. And, oh, this was Leslie Riley. Image transfer. This was an image transfer technique and I don't remember exactly what we did, but anyway, that's what we did. Um, this was, I can't read it. Can't read who it was, but anyway, I don't even remember the subject. It looks like it was water soluble graphite or something, but I don't know. This was another Tam Laporte. This is an example of some of her animals that she does. And this was on a bigger piece of paper. And so the way that I chose to do this, and I don't remember if this is how she did it in the class, but I did it so that it flipped down. So it was like a totem pole of, of quirky animals. I can't remember. I think that's what she called them was quirky animals. Some of these she did in the class. Some of them were ones that I did after the fact. Um, this, these were, these are actually color copies of the originals that I did. This was a Tam, Tam Laporte class. So these are color copies. They're not true renditions of the, the uh, actual pieces, but those were done a lot with the inks, which I really enjoyed that one a lot. This one was a real hard one for me. This was Serena Bridgman, I think it says. This was a very hard lesson for me. It's very hard for me to do faces in tones, color tones that are not realistic. Hello, Mary. But that was, uh, I really liked it after I got it done, but man, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. This was a Jane Davenport lesson. And some of them I look at and I go, oh yeah, I remember the point of the lesson. Some of them I look at and don't. This one I don't. This one was, uh, what is her name? Jenny, um, Jenny Belly. Is that her name? Jenny Belly, yeah. So this was her, her class. And this was done with, I did it with a fold-out book. So this was journaling that was done in this little book. And then I glued it in and clipped it in. This one is Effie Wild. That's what this one was. This was another one that was really a challenge for me. Huge challenge. I really, st I struggle with 
a lot of the intense layering up of things. Hello, Ruth. And let's see, this one was transfers using tape and uh, contact paper. That's what this was. So it was kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Um, this one, I forgot what her name was. Yeah, I forgot who this was. Uh-oh, stickage. This was the same gal that did this one back here at the front. This one. So this class and this class were by the same person. She, um, she has a very characteristic style and um, bright colors. That was a fun one to do. This was a Tam Laporte class doing a study, an intense study of the eye using the inks and so forth. That was a fun one to do. Um, this was more of the transfer using contact paper, as I recall. Can't remember for sure. Um, but it's, it's really, if you do think, if you do a class like this, a year-long class, if you will do the lessons as you go through it, you will learn all different kinds of styles and techniques, and that's the thing that is really valuable about a year-long class like that. And this was another one of the Finnebear classes using, she does all of this texture, and in the background she used T, the funny part about this, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. She used T, tags so these were the tea tags that came off the strings of tea bags and so that's what she used in this and I was not drinking tea with tea bag um, you know with strings on it like that mostly I'd get the kind that's just tea bags and so I had to go into my it's not that I didn't have tags you know tea with the tags on it because there's a lot of them on here but the funny thing was I went through, I raided my stash. I have lots of tea. I raided the stash and I took all of these tags off <laughs> to use in this class, don't you know? And later my husband was going through the, to get a, make a cup of tea and he goes, what happened to all of the little paper things on the tea bag strings? Because it did make it a bit of an adventure figuring out what tea you were gonna drink. Um, hi Patricia. Uh, this one, again, I don't remember. This has hand carved stamp in the background. Um, don't remember who that was, and I don't remember the point of the class at this moment. This was a fun one to do. This was Carissa Page, and I just the style is just so different than anything I would do, and um, so you, I tried to always follow what the teacher did and yet kind of make it my own and I just I love how she <laughs> love how she looks um, this one again I don't remember who it is uh, oh this was a Tam page Tam Laporte lesson on that one you can always tell because she she includes lots of houses and lots of fantasy things this was a really fun class to do I do remember that now that was sort of negative painting. Um, this one was another Tam class, Tam Laporte class. She does a lot of this embellishment coming down from the top. This was back before she was doing quite as much as she is now. And she also uses a lot of butterfly wings on, on her people. She does a lot more um, pronounced features in her faces than I do. In, um, this real bulbous nose is, is something she's known for, which is not my, the way that I normally do things. This is me. Um, this was a shot that Clausman took of me specifically for this class. And so this was, this was a fun 
thing in order to make the doors this was a fun this was really a fun class I recall and so this was all of my blessings behind the doors uh, there's Claus man I don't know if you can see that that's an image or that's a quilt that I made for him for Christmas that year yeah and there's my book this was another Tam Laporte class. This was done with inks, as I recall. That was really like abstract flowers. Um, let's see. This one was Christy Tomlinson. That's very characteristic of Christy's work. I think this was another Tam class. Yeah, this is another Tam Laporte. Again, lots of wings, very whimsical, this whimsical moon. The um, embellishments coming down from the top. And this one was the, uh, the feathers were all three dimensional. And then things written behind the, the uh, feathers. This was Tasha Parkinson. This is another paint over collage. This is an image of me that I painted over, not very successfully, <laughs> I might add, but anyway, paint over collage. So that started out as an image of me and then I just went crazy after that. Clearly went crazy after that. Um, this is Serena Bridgman, this one. This was an interesting one to do. This has a lot of textural elements in the background, a lot. Like it has a has fabric and it has all kinds of stuff in it. This was kind of an interesting interesting piece to do. I struggle with that a lot with the grays and the blacks and the severe look in the face. That's a big struggle for me, but and then this one, this was another Diane Reevely, I think. I believe this, I'm pretty sure this was Diane Reevely. Yeah. And there's a, there is a tag. I don't know whether I can get it out. It's probably firmly stuck in, but there's a tag in here, in through the weaving. Um, a collage. This one was Kelly Hornig, 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 Hornig. And this was fun because it used a, she actually used a, I forgot, just it flew out of my head. These little, yeah, flew out of my head with the Viewmaster slide. And I didn't have one, so I made one. She actually used the, the real thing. And these were from another Lifebook session, 15. This was the only one I think I got done in 15. Well, I've started that one. So these were all other pieces that I did in 2015, but never got them into a book. This was another one of the 2015. So I actually did more lessons than I thought I did. Inside here is an envelope of, um, I don't know what, more tags. This was another um, thing, and then this was this didn't have anything to do with with life book. This was just something that I did and put it on the back cover of my book. So anyway, that gives you an idea. That gives you a peek into the kind of thing that, like I said, this is 2014. So the whole premise could have changed from that, but. Uh, they tend to work on loose sheets of, of paper and then put them, bind them together in different ways into a book. So this, you end up with a big honking book by the time you're done with something like that. It was a fun, it was a fun class. It does take a lot of time, a lot of time, and, um, you know, I, how to get creative was just in its infancy back then, and I was recovering from family stuff and you know so I, I took the time to do that and it was really good for me. Yes, you have to pay for it. Yes. 
It's very reasonable, though. Very reasonable, I think. Hi, Shu. Okay. Is Jan here? Hello, Jan. I just saw somebody say hi to you. Hi, Tara. Okay. So sometimes it's good to see what other teachers do and how they approach things. And like I said, one of the things that's interesting about Tam's classes like that is that they, you know, you get to have a taster of different teachers. All right. I'm going to put on an apron because I'm working with acrylic paint today. Mm -hmm. So let me put this on. I hope you guys are having a great day. This is my mixed media apron that I actually did in a, a live class. And it started out with a regular apron, you know, the, a commercial apron. And then these were all techniques from the from the mixed media class that we did so and then I used my embroidery machine and I embroidered on it whatever the techniques were so there's dyed cheesecloth and paint sticks and Angelina fiber and this is um, construct fabric paper construction paper with Angelina fibers and it's fabric paper different kinds of paper and fabric techniques using creating confetti that's what let's see this is the confetti technique so it's little bits of fabric and stitch together to make a big piece of fabric this one I don't know what it was probably similar this is Tyvek these are noodles here and these these were classes that I did anyway and just added stuff onto it so anyway that's my apron okay so last week we talked about burrow days when I was in Colorado yep burrow days and what we did last week was a collage and so I'm going to show you this collage during burrow days they not only did burrow burrow as in donkey races and so forth just it's a lot of fun celebration time to get together in Fair Play Colorado they do it the last weekend of July and I happened to be there for it which was a lot of fun and so what I used were magazine images so this was from a, one of those tourist, you know, in, information tourist kinds of magazines. And I tore pieces out and then tore the pieces from the pieces that I selected. And then I collaged them down here to make just a, a landscape. So this was one thing. This was another. This was another piece. And then this was a shot that I took of this llama at the llama races. And so this was a picture that I did, and so I just blew it up and printed it out and collaged all this down, and eventually this will, you know, will straighten out, but for now it is really obnoxious. I might be able to, sometimes you can spray the back side of the page and get it to curl the opposite way. We're going to put a piece of wax paper in here to kind of protect the next page. Not that the next page is anything to write home about, but you know. So after I did that, I used a page in this art journal that just had a bunch of extra paint. And then I painted, um, sorry, I'm getting a binder clip painted the a blue sky and then finger painted clouds so that's all in last week's stream if you want to see it so what we're going to do now this is all collaged down I did it with glue stick I think couldn't tell you now for sure because I've slept since then badly I might add <laughs> not I did not sleep well this week last night I slept well thankfully whoo there's nothing, nothing like a good night's sleep to get you kind of get you going again 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to paint the llama. Then I will come back at some point. I will paint the rest of this to, you know, finish out this collage. But we're going to concentrate on the llama. Okay. Um, don't see anything. You like the circle flowers. Yeah, the, the circle flowers, these, I'm assuming you're talking about these, Sherry. These are a free class. It's one of the classes from um, howtogetcreative.com. There are 12 classes from the website that are here on YouTube, and this is one of them. These are flowers made from paper towels turned into a, a different type of fabric paper. And so you can find that here on YouTube. It's one of our most popular videos, actually. That and fabric paper from construction paper. Hey Hoot. Okay, so we're going to go back down here. We are going to use a palette, a disposable palette. We're going to start with I'm going to start with fresh paint because acrylic paint dries out and some of this will be usable but most of it's not. So I'm just going to start with fresh paint. Start again. It's a disposable palette and so I'm using it's really a good idea if you use, you know, if you're going to use all craft paint, then use all craft. If you're going to use craft paint, use all craft paint. Or uh, it's not a great idea to combine paints, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to combine paints. So I'm going to have some craft paint and some student grade paint. So I'm using white, and if I had my least favorite color in the entire world, some people love it, um, Titan Buff is not my favorite color. It is like, I don't know what color you call it, but I call it yuck. <laughs> it is not my favorite color. And I don't even have any of it. That's how much I don't like it. I don't keep it. It's kind of a taupey cream. Ugh. It's one of those. It reminds me of lukewarm coffee, and I just want to spit it out of my mouth. And so I'm going to substitute it with um, antique white, which is a, a uh, craft paint. Most of you know that I really dislike this color. <laughs> I dislike this color intensely. There are not. There are very few things that I could say to you that I really, really hate. That. I really really hate. Isn't that funny? Um, this is Mudstone, another craft paint. So this is called Mudstone. This is also one of those colors that I go, Bleh. but anyway, it's usable. Um, we're going to use, let's see, what else am I going to put out? I'm also using some artist grade paint, so I'm just sort of throwing the whole book at all of this. This is Golden Fluid Acrylic. This is Burnt Umber Light. And um, I'm going to put out some black. This one is ebony black. So I'm going to put some ebony black here. And then I also have soft black, which is this one. It's a brown. It's like a combination of burnt umber and lamp black. It is a brown black. And one more. We're going to use some raw sienna Let's see is that what I want raw sienna burnt sienna I'm going to use burnt sienna the difference between raw sienna and burnt sienna this is a raw sienna it's much more golden red uh, burnt sienna is much more red so I'm going to incorporate burnt sienna you guys hear me on the on the titan buff there's there's another name for that what is it um, buff titanium Ugh, just yuck. Anyway, every color has its place. Yeah, it's kind of a antique linen, antique white kind of color. All right, so we are going to start the process of painting over this collage. And to make it look like a painting, and I'm just going to do the llama. I'm not going to do the rest of it. I'm just going to do the llama. I do have a print, a color print that I printed out, which is, is reasonable. If I were not doing this for you guys, I would have this on the screen in my computer and I would be painting from my computer. 
but it's really hard for me to do that because I need all of my screens. I have four screens that I'm watching when I'm doing this with you guys, and I really don't want to sacrifice one of those to put this image up there, so that's why I printed it out. It's a waste of ink, quite frankly, but, you know, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for you guys. Okay, flat brushes. Um, so I'm going to use flat brushes that are angled brushes. These are craft brushes. These are nothing fancy. They are craft brushes. Come in a big pack. I think they came from Hobby Lobby, although I'm not sure. And um, so I have that in different sizes. I also have a big yucky container of water and some paper towels. And that is where we're starting. The other thing I have is a bottle of water and if my paint starts getting too sticky I will mist it and try to keep it try to keep it going but there are times when you just have to start over with fresh paint because acrylic paint if you keep going with acrylic paint it becomes sticky and you're gonna have to um, it will start lifting the paint off of your surface so you either have to have a medium in it you have to have some water in it you have to have something in it you can't have too much water or you interfere with the binder in the paint so it eventually doesn't want to stick to your surface it's more information than you wanted all you want to do is see how to paint this llama let's do it lukewarm mild coffee is right shoe you have got it you have got it Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start, I'm going to get rid of the image that's on my screen so you can actually see, so just a moment. That way you can see the corner of what's going on. So I have these different sizes of these brushes, so I'll, let me put them in order here. I'm sure there were more sizes of these brushes. Um, I like these brushes with the angled tip. I tend to paint with the long side of the, the brush the most, um, but I tend to like these. It took me a long time to get used to how to use them because I mostly did, um, mostly I used flat brushes when I was learning to paint, and I learned to paint with oil paints, which is a different animal altogether and painting with acrylic has been a real challenge for me although I really like it so um, I'm just checking the the chat here yes Titan buff yes some people that was a big back when I first got on YouTube uh, before I was actually streaming I was just watching people on YouTube and Ustream that was the big joke that it that the word Titan, which is um, T I T A N, Titan Buff, was actually people thought it meant tight, T I G H T, and Buff. <laughs> so leave that to your imagination, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to picture. It's up to you. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get this over a little bit further into the camera. When you see me reaching up here, it's because I'm going to the water bottle or the water um, container to rinse or pick up a little bit of water. You see all the paints that I have over here at the side. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to start down here with this part of the llama. So let me scoot this up just a little bit more. I'm going to start down here at the bottom part of the llama because it's big and you'll kind of get the idea of how, how this process works. We're not trying to take this image and turn it into this, okay? We are going to take this image and we're gonna turn it, uh, we're gonna take this image and we're gonna turn it on this black and white copy into something that looks like we actually painted it because indeed we did. So let me give you just a hint of where we're headed. This is the, the image that I was playing with earlier. All of this up in here, this part of the head has not been done. And I have also decided to eliminate all the harness or halter, I guess it would be, on the llama. So I've taken that out. But you can see by looking at 
this part of the llama, blocking out the rest of this, okay, blocking that out, it looks like it's been painted. That's what we're after, okay? Not photorealism, just like a fun painted image. So that's what we're going for, okay? Does that make sense? You guys can do this. I promise you can do it. All right? Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. So I am looking at this because I have it actually printed out in the same size as the piece that I used here. My paint brushes are falling apart. If you leave your brushes in the water too long, the outside varnish and paint will start flaking off, and that's what I have going on here. So this is all flaking off, so periodically you'll see me have to get something off my painting because it is, it is really um, coming apart. So because I have it in the, the same size as my image down here, I can really reference the, the size the size relationship. I'm going to um, just put my brush in water to start with because it helps to release the paint later. Also, in my water here, I know the poor things, in my water I have a little bit of Murphy Oil Soap. That also helps to release the paint out of your brushes. So that is what I do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some white because this is a kind of a a reddish brown but it's light because this llama was in the sunshine so I'm gonna take some white I'm gonna put a little bit of this mucky ugly color which is already giving me fits so I'm gonna brush mix these colors I am NOT gonna mix them with great big piles of paint because I want the variation in the color and then I'm gonna pick up some of the burnt sienna because this is a red it's kind of a reddish brown and then maybe a little bit of the burnt number. So I have mix, I have combined artist paint, student grade paint, and craft paint in this one color. And I think I need a little bit more of this because I'm just comparing. I'm comparing what's my color to what's back here, and so that's what I'm doing. Okay, good enough. Let's paint it. So I'm just going to paint this like so. Now the disadvantage to not mixing your paint with a palette knife is that if you run out of paint then you've got to brush mix some more. The advantage to that is that you, when you mix it up the next time you'll get a variation in the color so it won't be the same flat color and that's good that is a good thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this paint on there. It is acrylic. I am working in a house where the air conditioner is on and so my air conditioner is gonna dry this paint pretty quickly so I you can't dilly-dally around with it too long. Okay, so I'm just mixing up a little more paint here. Okay, so it's about the right color, give or take. I'm going to pinch out the paint. I'm going to pick up some of my burnt umber on the side of my brush and blend it on my palette. So I have a soft blend of paint. This is called a side-loaded brush. And I'm just going to pat that down. So I did that. I added that paint on the long side of the brush and then I'm with short strokes I'm just gonna put this on here I don't have much time to do this before this paint the underneath paint is so sticky that I'm not gonna be able to blend it so I'm working pretty fast so if if you're not familiar with acrylics and honestly you know I'm marginally successful with acrylic I act like I talk know what I'm talking about yeah you know sometimes not so much um, I just put it on here and, and blend it as quickly as I can. Then I'm going to pick up more of this dark brown mix. And if I don't get enough, I'll have to mix a little bit more. Because you do have to have enough paint on the brush in order for it to come off. If your paint, if your brush is too, um, 
If it's too naked, if it doesn't have enough paint on it, it's going to start trying to lift the paint from your surface. I don't have enough, so I'm going to come back and get a little bit more. And then I'm just going to start giving the suggestion of the um, coat on the llama. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a suggestion. I'll come back and add some more stuff later, but that's going to be my starting place. So it does have some dimension. Okay? Then I'm going to pinch the paint out again, trying to stay out of the water as long as possible. I'm going to come back in here and pick up some of this muckledy duck ugly color. My favorite color in the whole world. I'm going to mix that just a little bit. I'm after a color a uh, tint that's lighter so that it will show up very lightly. I'm just going to give it a little bit more coat suggestion of his coat. I don't know if this was a girl or a boy. I'm painting on the chisel edge of my brush. It means I'm standing up on the edge on the end. And then we're going to call it good. Okay? Enough. That's enough. Now we're going to go to the next part of this llama and that happens to be the neck. And if you look at the neck, this part is noticeably lighter. We're going to paint over all this stuff because this is my prerogative. This is my photograph. I can paint out all that stuff. Okay. And so I'm going to ignore that. And then this is a kind of a different color, but we have to make it go together. So even though this is in shade and this is in bright sunlight, and it probably was all the same color in real life, we have to give it some some dimension. So we're going to start with, I'm going to start, I'd say we just because you're here. <laughs> I'm going to start with my favorite color. Give it a little squirt of water because it was getting too sticky. Okay, so I'm going to start there and I'm just going to kind of bring in all these other colors that are here and maybe put a little bit more of this favorite color. And what I'm going for is something that's similar to what this section of the llama is. Okay? So it needs to be noticeably lighter than this part. Otherwise, it's not going to... Um, it's not going to look like it is over the llama, over the body part of the llama. Sometimes I use my finger to just kind of soften out the edge of the paint. And the, the, it turns from light to this darker color. You can see it right here in the black and white um, version. You can see where that changes color. Now the trick here is you got to move fast enough when you're working with acrylics like this. You have to work fast enough so that we can get the darker color on here. If you've never tried working with acrylics, this is a really good way to try it, you know, because you, um, you're painting over something, you're not creating it from scratch. You've got something underneath, which is, is really a good, good way to go. You have a guide, a specific guide under there. Okay, we're going to put some more color here, but I need a noticeably darker shade. So I'm just mixing some stuff together, then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to come up here, come around the face, okay, and then I'm going to mix these two together as I come down, because I don't want this to be like a light stripe and a medium stripe, or a darker stripe. Okay, you got to kind of dance between the two colors so that there's some blending going on. And we'll add more as we get going here, but it just, you see how we got a blend of the two colors. 
Now you do have to kind of watch when you're doing something like this, you do have to kind of watch the outline. If you're trying to maintain the integrity of the outline of, of the image, and if you get too much going, you know, too much paint out here, use a damp brush and you can come in and just kind of chase it back with a damp brush. I generally don't worry about it a whole lot. Now if I'm painting one of the wood carvings that I painted so many of for so long, that was a different situation because they were so detailed and I you know, had specific things in mind that I wanted to do. But on something like this, this is an art journal page, it's just for fun. Then, you know, it's, although it's a real llama, by the time we get done with this, we're trying to make it look not so real. We want it to be our version. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this over here so it gets a little bit of texture in the fur, the coat, the fur coat. And then I'm going to darken this down. So see, I'm always trying to make it go together, but not, um, not be too realistic. I hope that makes sense to you. bit of the yuck color into it. A little too much water in my brush here. I also have a glare on my paint, so I'm in a little trouble seeing what I'm doing. Okay, that's good enough. It is good enough. As she comes in and touches it just a little bit more, because that's kind of, that's pretty much how Barb paints. She'll go, yep, that's good, move on. The next thing you know, I got my finger in it or the brush in it, and I'm doing some more. Okay, we're going to call it good. Stay out of it, Barb. Okay, so that is what we've got. You can see we painted out, I painted out all of that, this harness um, halter business. I got rid of all of that. So I'm not gonna, if I wanna put it in, I'll put it in later. But for now, I'm gonna leave it out. One thing you wanna do with acrylic in brushes, you need to keep the acrylic, the bulk of it out of your brush if you don't, if you let that dry, it's hard to get it out. You can sometimes remove it by soaking your brushes in straight Murphy oil soap, but it takes a while. And these are craft brushes, so honestly, I'm not gonna waste the Murphy oil soap on that. Unless it's a brush that I dearly love. Yeah. Okay, so I've got enough of it out until I clean the brush later, I've got enough of it out. So let's start on the muzzle of this llama. This llama not only has a muzzle, but he has the world's worst teeth. Do you see the teeth on this poor, poor llama? Unlike me, this llama has not been to the dentist. I was at the dentist again this week. Shall we take, <laughs> shall we take, should we take a break and talk about Barb's dental? 
I'm done with the dental appointments. I was talking to my son about it not too long ago. Well, it was earlier in the week, of course, because it was after I'd been to the dentist. <laughs> and I said, you know, all of those years where I kept putting things off, they all caught up with me this year. And um, so our, I've been at the dentist. I think this was my fourth trip to the dentist this summer. And I think that I now have everything in my mouth fixed. Keep your fingers crossed because it was an expensive summer. Keep your fingers crossed that Barb's mouth is fixed. It was just an assortment of things. And, and my son said, he wrote in the text when we were talk, you know, talking back and forth, he said, deferred maintenance. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was deferred maintenance. That's what it was. I don't recommend that. It's it's easier on your pocketbook if you do it along instead of stack it up. Then they go like this, you know, it goes here, da -da 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 -da, and then they just keep stacking up, and then you got to do it. Anyway, that's true. Or or um, almonds. Yeah, it's it's been a thing. Yeah, so I ended up with I ended up with more than I thought I was going to do because I had two teeth that ended up chipping but they were save, salvageable so that's good um, I ended up with a total of three crowns a bridge um, and three fillings <laughs> you, know, you can add it up and this is a great dentist so he's very reasonable and he was very kind so okay so we're going to talk about how we're going to approach this because he's got uh, what you want to do is you want to look this is really a good example of looking at something in black and white this is this is really good if you'll do it in black and white and paint over the black and white image because you can clearly see the different sections of the snout and the the muzzle and the bottom part of his face and then if you have a color reference you can actually use your your brush to mix the color to go into that space okay so it is a gray kind of a warm gray up here and the part where it's really catching the sunlight so I'm gonna start with that and then I'm just gonna approach it in the shapes that I see and that's what you want to do is look at the shapes of what you're seeing here not the thing that you go oh it's a nose and I have to paint a nose Oh, it's teeth. I have to paint teeth. Oh, it's a chin. I have to paint a chin. No, you want to look at the shapes. And if you have to, you could actually, you know, if it would help you, you could actually use a pencil and you could outline those shapes so that you could actually see what the shape is that you're going to be painting. And for some people, that might be a real handy thing to do. Okay? hundred thousand dollars really that's what it felt like um, okay so I'm gonna go back to a different angled brush so I'm getting it wet and tapping out the excess water I'm gonna brush mix a light gray so I'm just gonna keep working in this mess that I've got going on here because if it happens to pick up some of the under color that's okay that just makes it all go to big together better I'm going to pick up this Mississippi mud color and mix that into the white. That immediately has a warm tone to it, um, but it's not this. <laughs> it's similar to that. These two colors, ugh. anyway, you got to have them. You got to have them. Uh, they're necessary. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm watching the shape of the nose. watching the shape and I'm putting down the lightest of the gray area it does not have to be exactly what's in the photograph we are taking license with this it is our llama it is Barb's llama Barb took this photograph it's not my llama it's my photograph okay I'm not intending to get a super um, smooth coat of paint 
just want the color to go down. I tend to use the biggest brushes that I can possibly use. Sometimes people think I'm crazy for using brushes as big as I do, but I get a smoother application of paint if I will um, use a big brush. And then I'm going to come down here because this is similar in color. It's a little grayer. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the Mississippi mud and pick up a little bit of the soft black, which is already skinning over. A little bit of soft black. And I'm going to put this color down here in his, below his nose in that muzzle area. And the hair grows, the hair, the fur, the chin grows kind of out. It looks like it kind of goes down and out. So that's how I'm going to put that color in there and feather it out here on the side so that I don't get a, a straight line right in here. If I got a straight line in there, that would be much harder to uh, blend out when I bring in the darker color. And over here, this is in the light, this section, so I'm going to add a little bit more white into that. But I still need it to go together, so I don't want it to look like it's, you know, stark white. And he's got, this llama's got kind of a fat little jowl, snoot, snout, over here. I'm following the um, things on my image, the outlines, the sections, and this part, this part comes over um, the neck, so I'm going to just kind of flop that, a little bit of that color down there on the neck, okay, a little bit. Okay, and that's too straight, and so I'm going to come back in and I'm going to round this out because I got it way too straight. Okay, all right, that looks okay. That's okay with me. Let that feather out a little bit here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, there's a little bit of his neck hair showing here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the brownish, the brown tones and mix into this color while it's still got some wetness to it. There's not very much back there, but there is a little bit. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and paint that in right here. Okay, right there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the burnt umber on the side of my brush, side loading it, which means that I have the dark color on the angled part of that brush. And that way I can paint with that right next to his nose and that will help that part um, go beneath his mouth okay all right and if I need more I mean this is the kind of stuff that I can butts around forever literally. Futz is a technical term. And I'll go back and forth between those two colors until I get 
the blend that I'm after. Okay, so you can see like it's behind that part of his nose. Okay, let's see if there's questions. Just check in the chat here. Hey, Charlene. Okay, I didn't see anything that really needed my uh, attention. Okay, so we've got that part. So now what we're going to do is work on this part of his snout and his chin here. So we're going to do that. And this is this is a darker uh, darker gray with a little bit of brown in it. This is more similar to what this. The chin is more similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a dark dark gray. So I'm going to use some soft black, a little bit of black black. This is lamp black. So I'm going to put those two colors together. And then I'm going to put some white in it. And I'm going to have to put a little bit of the burnt umber light to warm it up because if I don't, that's going to be like a shocking contrast in color. So I'm going to put a little bit more white. Anytime you want to see what color something really is, like if this color is really dark and you want to see what color it really is, put some white in it. That's how you can figure out what color it really is. Otherwise, it's just dark and you look at it and you don't really have any idea what color it is. Sometimes I have to put just a touch of water in so that the paint will actually move a little bit. I am working over um, a coat of matte medium. So it is soaking that paint right in. All right, we're going to come down here to the chin, pick up a little more white in the mix because this is moving into the light a little bit more. And just I'm just constantly looking back at my reference photo just to kind of make sure that I'm staying kind of true to the to the image. Doesn't have to be totally true, but you know, kind of true. All right.
and clearly you can probably understand by now that I get lost in this process and when I get lost in it then I forget to talk. I can always come back and adjust colorations and stuff here in a little bit and this is too flat so we'll add some more color into it. We can add a little bit of color into it now. And I'm really working with a brush that's too big so I'm going to drop down to the small one. What I'm after is a color contrast to what's underneath it in here. And just creating some the suggestion and texture of the the hair. Again, not not photorealism. This is painting over a piece of collage. Okay, so we got a little chin hair action going. All right, let's do some teeth, shall we? All right, ugly, ugly, bad teeth. So we're gonna start out with that yucky color and some burnt umber. These teeth are coming up from the bottom so we're gonna put some teeth coming up from the bottom. My poor brush is in terrible shape. Oh yeah, the poor thing. Hadn't been to the dentist in a long time. Long time. Poor baby. The poor baby. I thought I had dental, uh, dental woes. <laughs> Nothing compared to this guy. Nothing. It's got him some bad teeth going on. That's what we're after. Bad teeth. Don't detail it too much or it'll turn him into good teeth. <clears throat> Hi Sandy. Absolutely. It is a fun technique to do. It's not original with me. I really don't know who first came up with it. Um, but the place where I learned it to do it originally, you know, the basic concept was with Tam Laporte. Uh, willowing.org. Okay. Are you enjoying this? Are you having fun learning a little bit of something, maybe a little something new, a little something different? I hope so. Okay, we're gonna, so we've got, you know, the bulk of, of this 
area done. I haven't done anything with the nostril yet. I'll come back and put some dark. Well, maybe we'll just do it now. I'm just going to come back in and use some of the soft black, which is a real brown black, and maybe add a little bit of black, lamp black, into it. And then I'm going to follow the shape that I see for the nostril over on this side is a triangle. It's not quite black enough. And then this one is comes down and kind of comes up. Okay, so we've got the nostrils painted in but there is color that comes around those nostrils so I'm going to pick up some white and mix into this nostril color that I've got going on maybe a little bit of this creamy color just to keep everything going together and my paint has gotten so sticky I have to put out some fresh paint So my project this week has been to start cleaning out my garage. This is a garage that has had business stuff in it, personal stuff in it, hobby stuff in it. for 32 years or longer. Do you want to know what a big mess it was? Do you want to know how overwhelming it was to start? Whew! You know what? If a project is overwhelming, you know what the hardest part of it is? What do you guys think is the hardest part of an overwhelming project? You put it in the chat. Tell me, what do you think the hardest part is? of an overwhelming project. I'm just messing with the nose. I'm gonna, I wanna see what you guys have to say. What is the hardest part? Picking where to start, deciding where to start, starting, getting started. <laughs> you guys are right. You're all correct. Starting. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to zoom in on this because now I'm working in a pretty tight area. So we're going to come in a little bit closer so you can see a little bit more of this nose area. The reason I was zoomed out so far is so you could see my palette, but at this point you know the colors I'm working with, and so we're just going to zoom in on it so you can see a little bit more. Getting off your butt, Brenda, you're right. Oh, the overwhelm. The overwhelm was just phenomenal. All right, I'm going 
going to change this because otherwise I'm just going to paint the binder clip. So let's put it down there, the bottom of the page. Okay, so let's work in this area in here. And this is going to get into more of this fur coat right in here. So we're going to come in here and mess around with this a little bit. This part's looking pretty good. His nose is looking okay. Um, actually, we could put a little bit more up and if I can get it, if I can get a little bit more paint. You guys, it, it was so overwhelming to me. Let's see if I can get this to show up. There we go. Okay. I need a little bit of hair to come sticking up over that nostril. I can hardly do this and talk at the same time, you guys. Okay, so we kind of got it to look like that nostril goes back inside. That's what we're after. I'll tell you how overwhelming it was while I take a break. I didn't sleep for two nights, basically. I was talking on the phone to a friend of mine at 5 o'clock the other morning <laughs> because I couldn't sleep, she couldn't sleep, so we're talking. We talked for two and a half hours. Is Travis here? Travis? Hey, Travis is here. Travis is from the same town that I live in. Hello, I'm so glad you're here. I always love it when Travis shows up in my chat. It's always nice. It's like when you see somebody from your hometown, just like it's nice, you know. Anyway, so it was so overwhelming that for two nights I didn't sleep. And the first night when I start, it was like, where do I start in this garage? It was just awful. It was really awful. It was really, <laughs> it was really awful. There are so many tools. Claus Man had a business. He was a contractor. And he had so many tools, so many tools. Uh, and not only did he have tools, he had duplicates of the same tools, okay? I found six pairs of knee pads. Was it five or six? Five, I think, maybe five pairs of knee pads. Three, so far three small ladders, like the ones that just have like two steps, but you can stand on top of it. I don't, I lost track of how many big ladders I took out of the garage and also there's a stack in the backyard. Everything from extension ladders to step ladders of every height. Um, tools like hand tool, like, like the kind of like post hole type digger shovels, you know, narrow, long. I found two of those. Um, that's just getting started. And the extension cords, I won't even I couldn't even count how many extensions. Are. Three shop backs, one great big one, two small ones. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that doesn't even count all the tools that are in cases. There were cases of paint brushes, um, you know, boxes that had paint brushes, plant paint brushes that are hanging on the pegboard. I haven't even started the pegboard. Um, jersey gloves, work gloves, leather gloves. Uh, vinyl coated gloves um, and many of those had holes in them so those went to the trash immediately uh, you know it just sort of goes on and on that doesn't even touch the paint the varnish the pastes the spray cans that just goes on and on and on and on at the end of the second night I called my son those of you that know him, I don't think he's here. Oh, really? Oh, nice. 
You couldn't go? Oh, well, it was really warm here, I'm sure. If you ever get to Columbia, Travis, you better, you better let me know that you're coming. You better let me know that you're here, okay? You better let me know. We need to have lunch or coffee or something, okay? Anytime somebody passes through the Midwest, the middle part of Missouri, you need to let me know that you're here so that we can get together and spend, you know, spend some time together. I will make time for you no matter what, if at all possible. So anyway, at the end of day two, of course, I was really tired. That was the day I'd been to the dentist. I'd had all this work done. You know, I'm suffering from anesthesia overdose and it's leaving my face. <laughs> He worked on both sides of my mouth the same day. Listen to me complain. I'm so grateful to have it done, but it was not so much fun. Anyway, so I think part of my overreaction was the anesthesia. Anyway, I called my son, or he called me after I text, sent him a text and said, I need to talk to you. So he calls me. The first thing I do is burst into tears. Every son wants his mother to do that to him, don't you think? <laughs> Oh, cool, Gail. I, I know they would think that I have family members that want said tools. I just am trying to get rid of the trash, the paint, the junk that, that's all dried up and ruined. Because Clausman had not touched any of that for the last three years, at least. Okay. All he did was stack it and spill it and stack it and spill it and I was accused if you can imagine by a friend of mine of being in a bitchy mood <laughs> I was asked if I was still in a bitchy mood and you know what I said well let me think <laughs> because I just I deserve to be in that mood Yes, I did. And then I got over myself. He is, Travis. He is. I'm glad he's not listening to me. He's probably listening and he's just not wanting to <laughs> chime in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work in this section. Anyway, by last night, uh, by last night, I was in a much better frame of mind. And I did it with a good attitude. And I got stuff done that I needed to do, and I was in a much better frame of mind by last night. Yeah. And one of my neighbors came over and helped me shove things around and, you know, got things moved out of the way, and it was very helpful. Oh, God bless my neighbors. I'm telling you, they are good people. Good people. Okay, so we're going to put some... Some hair here coming down. My neighbor was a big help, let me tell you. Oh man, I had a rough I I had a I had an absolute total and complete total complete meltdown. Mm hmm You guys should be so glad that you were not anywhere close to me. Tuesday and Wednesday. Because there's not a one of you that would have wanted to hang around with me. Not one of you. And that is a fact. You know what? I didn't want to hang around with me. That's how bad it was. <laughs> I didn't want to hang around with me. You guys know what I'm talking about? Goodness. What do you do when you get in a mood like that? How do you get yourself out of it? You know what I didn't do? I didn't buy any wine and drink myself into a stupor. There was a day in my life when I would have made that choice. Are you surprised? Yeah. I make better choices by far than I did at one point in my life. I think everybody needs to know that we're all human and we make bad choices sometimes. Yep. 
Yep, sometimes we make poor choices. Okay, here we go. What do you do to get yourself out of those kinds of funks? That's positive. What's a positive choice you can make to get out of that stuff? Get out of that frame of mind? Because you still have to do the thing, you know? You still got to do the thing. You can't pretend, you know, I could put it off for another day another time and you know what all that's going to do is just put literally put it off and make it worse part of what I was dealing with was the fact that you know it had been that way for so long and um, part of it was the reality you know here's the reality guys and this seems so crazy to have to tell you but Claus man is not coming back how many times have I had to say that to myself and as long as I leave this garage exactly as it was there's a part of me some weird warped part of me back here probably lives in about a one square inch place that you know has this little thing that says well if you leave it alone long enough what is that, people? What is that? That's crazy talk. That is crazy talk, okay? It's crazy. Can't can't live in the crazy. Can't get live in the crazy, can't get stuck in the crazy. You got to you got to keep moving forward. Yeah, got to move forward, but you know what? You can't I can't move forward until I deal with the past. How's that for some deep thoughts from Barb on a Friday afternoon? <laughs> How's that for some deep thoughts? Did you know you were coming to Barb for deep thoughts this week? Okay, all right. Did you know that? All right, let me look at your, your chat. Um, some part of the, some, some, sometimes the best part of the day is when it's over, yeah. Mm hmm CB says she has to be alone yeah really I don't want to lose it with I, yeah yeah I but the thing is I needed friends I needed somebody you know what irritates me it irritates me that I am not strong enough to move everything and do everything by myself because I would but I have to ask for help it's that asking thing that is really trips me up sometimes okay what else um, Mary, your email. I don't think I did. Don't think I did. I will have to look. Did you send a support ticket, Mary? Did you send a support ticket or did you send find my email address and send it directly to me? Brenda says she waits for the low mood to pass and doesn't push herself too hard. Yeah, but I was really smacked up against a a wall of I got to do something so I understand that too um, Patricia puts one foot in front of the other good point listen to favorite oh I had music you know I have earbuds that go in my ears I had my phone with I was listening to praise music at a decibel level <laughs> that I'm sure it was bad for my ears I had my phone in my pocket. I have my music going so loud and I am and I am throwing things so hard into a trailer that I have the trash into the trailer. It's throwing stuff so hard in there that I'm pretty sure the neighbors were looking out their windows. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but man, it wasn't funny the other night. Okay, what else? Um, I know, Carrie, you are absolutely right. Thank you, Cindy. Yep, be kind to yourself. Yes. Yeah, Brenda always comes to me for deep thoughts. That is so sad, Brenda. That is so sad. <laughs> My deep thoughts are better than most. Oh, you guys, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> ah, yes. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I had to finally have that talk with myself. One 
think one shelf at a time, Barb. One shelf. Pick up one thing, make a decision, and deal with the one thing. Okay? I finally did. Yeah. Um, I know, Gail, right? I know, Carrie. Carrie says, um, asking for help allows others to receive the blessing of helping. I know it's true, but you know what they don't want to do? They don't want to sit, they don't want to come in and watch you cry and blubber and carry on. That's what they don't want to do. And I don't blame them. I don't want to do that to anybody. They all think I'm crazy anyway, but that's all right. I am. Hello, Heavenbound Homestead. I'm sorry I don't remember your name. Um... Yeah, you know what? The closet, it's funny what things are hardest for us, right? The closet wasn't hard for me. The closet wasn't hard at all. The garage was hard, you know, because the closet has doors on it. The door's shut, and I don't see that stuff, you know, and I dealt with that quite a while ago. But the garage, every time I pull in my car, there it is. Every time friends come over and visit, when they leave, they go out the garage, I turn around, and there it is. You know, it's just this constant thing in my face. And I just has like, girl, <laughs> that's what I said to myself. Girl, it is time for you to deal with this, and you got to do it now. You got to start. So, but the next thing is, where do you start? It's a two-car garage. It has got 10 gallons of it has got five car garage worth of stuff in it. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but a lot, you know? It's like, where do you start? Because there's no place, you need places to put things. You know how you're gonna reorganize like my studio? That That's kind of what started this because the studio needs to be reorganized, but I don't have any place to put stuff so I can reorganize it so I can put it back. So I'm like, how do I do this? How do I start this? I can't just put it all out on the driveway because if I put it out on the driveway, I got to put it back and that's not an accomplished thing, right? So it was just the biggest nightmare to, you know, physically where to begin this massive, massive project. And I finally thought, begin at a corner. So I started at the front edge of the front corner of the garage and I just started working my way down the wall that worked because I had a method to the madness and yeah so anyway okay what else did you guys say um, you've cried here more than any other stream oh Brenda I'm sorry Brenda I don't mean to ever make you cry <laughs> Although I'm cry although I cry. No. Uh one thing at a time. Yes. <laughs> I hear you, Gail. <laughs> I am taking care of it. <laughs> That's right. C B says fancy company uses the front door. But my front door is very close to the garage and so it's a it's a catch twenty two. Yes it is. I do have a folding table, but it wasn't enough. Hello, Laura. Thank you for stopping in. Um, you did that, you started in one corner, good. That was a smart thing I did, right? You delivered a couch to a neighbor's house by yourself? Go tink, go, t go tink, my goodness. <laughs> my goodness, okay. All right, let's go back. So we've talked enough. Let's go back. What time is it? I'm going to stay about mm, seven or eight more minutes. Let's see if we can get the top of this llama. I'm not going to detail this whole thing out for you, but we'll get, you know, we'll get a little bit more. So I've got this section pretty much, you know, it's pretty much detailed out enough to suit me. So how about if we paint in some eyes? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to um, give myself the eyeball shape so I can see where it is I want to paint this. Okay, so there's that one. 
Hang on just a minute, you guys. I gotta look at a text message. Okay. Um, and this one over here, I, yeah, you can see that. So this one over here is looks like it goes kind of like it's really hard to see because this the eyeball blends in with the hair around it this one actually needs to come out a little bit more okay so there's our llama drama llama llama a llama 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 eyes so we're gonna paint these eyes I'm going to paint them a combination of soft black and black mixed together. Trying to get enough paint out of my skinned over paint here to... I'm just brush mixing. I'm just brush mixing these two colors. This is soft black and this is black. Lamp black. So I'm just brushing those together. I like the brush mixing as I said earlier because then it gives variety in the color. So it's not just one flat color. I was recording a class for the VIP group last Sunday, I think I did it, and I was telling them that I always use the biggest brushes I can possibly use in a given area. And um, some people are kind of mystified by why I do that. Part of it, folks, is that I'm lazy and I don't like to wash brushes. And part of it is that I will get a better blend with color if I use a big brush rather than a, a small one. So sometimes with small brushes you just end, end up digging holes in the paint. Okay, so we got one eye. Now we're going to fill in the other one. You can cover territory quicker with a big brush. And you'll notice that I constantly turn the brush in my hand because I tend to paint mostly with the large section or the longer section of the angled brush. And so I tend to just keep turning the brush around in my hand. You do whatever works for you, you know? You do what what you've learned, what fits your hand, what fits your painting style. And now we are going to take some artist license here. Okay, so I think I've got, yeah, looks like two giant holes in his head. So we got to do something to make him make this llama look alive and this is one of my favorite things about any face is the eyes okay so we got that all right i'm going to use the lamp black which is not maybe going to be a lot of difference here to you guys but it's going to be a difference to me so i've taken the bulk of the paint off of my brush just by wiping it on the palette I'm going to stick the longer edge of my brush, the longer side of my brush, in the lamp black. I'm going to do that a couple of times and blend it so that I have a really dark edge. And then I'm going to come in here, controlling where that black paint is, and I'm going to put that super dark black right next to his face. right next to the face 
like so. Okay. Now, you may not be able to see that, but I can see it. And it's all about me, so, you know, there you go. So I'm going to pick up some more black. This time I'm going to put this... Oops, sorry. You almost could, you almost could not see. And I'm going to put the black up here. I almost got myself in trouble here. It's trying to dig the paint. Mm -mm. That's what you call letting the paint get sticky. And you dig a hole. But I think I can get away with it. I'm going to pat a little paint back there in the hole. Hopefully you can't see that. Okay, so I've got some black up there. I'm going to wipe out my brush. I'm going to pick up some of the Mississippi mud on that same long edge, and I'm going to blend it on my palette so that I'm going to get a light edge. And I'm going to put the light edge on this eyeball out here at the end, the very edge here. I'm going to turn this around, so I'm going to paint with the other side of this brush, the black side. Don't have enough, so i got to get some more. Alright, it's not going to work, so i got to get some some black on my brush with a little bit of the soft black and I need to come in here and blend the edge of that just a little bit and this is where I will play back and forth between the light and the dark Okay, all right, hopefully you can kind of see that that's beginning to maybe get a little bit of a roundish shape and we'll make it even more so here in a minute. I'm going to come back and get a little bit more of that Mississippi mud and we're going to see if we can put some of this down here at the bottom edge of his eyeball. light reflecting on my page and I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing here. Okay. Alright. It's not too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. Put a little bit more dark in here. Just playing back and forth between dark and light. Okay, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I'm going to wipe my brush out real well. I'm going to pick up some strong white paint. Okay, some strong white paint. Blend off, knock off the chunks so I don't have any big chunks on it. Alright, we're going to come in here and we're going to make his eyes shine. Okay, not too bad. If you get one that's too big, and you come back in and you chase it back with the black or the black, dark, um, soft black. You just chase it back a little bit so it's not quite so, so big. Okay, and so. When we back out and look at him from 
where we should see him, which is out, you know, from above, from not with your nose down right on top of him. You should be able to see his eyes um, look like they're looking someplace and shining in the light. Okay? Does that make sense? He's got some teefers, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Bye, Kellyanne. Good to see you. Have a great, great week, weekend. Yeah, um, you know, I just can't keep the paint that wet. I've seen all kinds of tricks that people use for keeping the paint wet, and I've never been able to keep it wet enough to, um, to work for me. You know, I just get more paint out and go again. All right, you guys, that is, um, I'm going to put this out of the way since it's wet. I'm going to move this. I know we didn't, I didn't paint the whole thing yet. Um, and I, I won't put you through the torture of watching this for a third week next week. I'm going to come in here just a little bit more so you can see, see more of it. But you can tell that where we stopped painting is right in here. So I need to do his ears and the top of his head and around his eye, eyes. And then um, I'll probably flick some hair out onto the um, around because they're very rough coated. You know, they have a lot of hair sticking out, you know, like a bad hair day. Look at all that coming out of the ears and stuff. So I will probably do something, not the same, but something similar on this one. But that is called the paint over collage. So the image was collaged down and then I just painted over it. Oh, thank you, Lady Jan. Don't tell race the illegal fluid fun top up. Thank you, Jan. You're awfully sweet. Um, and so that is where we're gonna stop for today. I'm glad you were here to hang out with us, Travis. I'm so glad. Please come back. Please come back and uh, spend some more time with us. If I can get the time this week, I will continue working on this. I hope I can get it, you know, finished the rest of the way so you guys can can see the page finished when it's, you know, when it really is completed. <laughs> I'll do my best, okay. Needs a nose ring. I need a nose ring or he needs a crown. He needs, you know, he needs a few things, you know, to kind of kind of give him a little something something don't you think what do you think he should have what do you think this llama should have in order to make him more special I think he needs a crown I think he needs butterfly wings a la Tam Laporte you think he should have a crown what do you think he should have I'm so glad you were here Shelly thank you Dorothy I'm glad you're all here nose ring I think nose ring would be funny a flower crown like the donkeys. Ah. Glasses or a hat. Yeah, a hat with his ears sticking up would be funny too. You never know what could happen. You just never know what could happen. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in and how much I've had time I've spent out in the garage sniffing paint. <laughs> Gold tooth. That would be funny. All right, you guys. Thank you for um, spending time with me. Thanks for putting up with my nonsense and uh, listening to my tales of woe and deep thoughts you guys need to have a good weekend for me okay and um, enjoy yourselves do something fun remember to look around you see the beautiful creation that we have been given to enjoy be sure to take care of it too and um, enjoy the rest of this weekend do something kind for somebody else, you know. Do something kind. Say some kind words. Smile at people. That's one of the best things you can do is to smile at people. And just look them in the eye and let them know that you really see them. It makes a big, big difference. Sometimes you are the difference in somebody else's life 
as I've told a lot of you, told many of you, I spent an awful lot of last year being very, very suicidal. And it did not take much to keep me hanging on. And I am forever grateful to the people who said kind words, who made, you know, kind, uh, reached out in a kind way. It always came in exactly the right moment and it was just enough. So you can be the difference in somebody else's life. So be sure that you take advantage of those moments, okay? Do it for me. All right. I will see you next week. Um, yes, I will be here for several Fridays in a row. And then I, I will have a couple of Fridays in September and October when I will be gone again. But for the rest of this month, I think I'm here. So I will see you next Friday for the next edition of a Drama-Free Friday. Thank you for being here. Check out howtogetcreative.com. Have a wonderful weekend. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I will see you next week. Bye for now.